Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and today I have a tutorial to share with you. I more than likely will have to do it in separate parts, but we'll see how fast we can go. Um, but today we're going to do this folio. This is um, a design team project that I made with Country Craft Creations Retro Min Collection and there's a variety of different themes throughout the collection. And for this folio, I chose to focus on the fishing papers and then um, just uh, supplemented the rest with all the plaids that are in, in the collection, which the plaids are amazing. So we'll just do a quick little flip through. This folio is five and a half by seven and a half. And here is what it looks like. All these little... Um, what do you call it? I can't even think. But these metal um, embellishments are from Tim Holtz. They're different. Um, this one is in a different package. This brad with the hoop ring on here is in a different package. And I don't remember the names. If I can find it, I will put it in the description below. And then um, this piece that I use to hook that on to, it is um, a hitch fasteners. So it looks like that there. And like I said, I do have this, but I don't remember what the name of these are called. But I don't know. These just felt like, you know, fishing hooks. <laughs> so I added it to the book along with some netting that I got at a craft store. And then this um, kind of twine here. It's like a leather. Um, what do you call that? I don't even know what that's called. Weaved. There you go. I needed the visual with my hands. <laughs> Um, but it's on like a ribbon spool at Hobby Lobby. So it's over in the ribbon section. But I thought that would be cool, kind of mimicking the basket. And then, again, this would just be a quick flip through since I do have a walkthrough of this folio. There is a 4 by 6 tag here, 3 by 4 little booklet. This flips open like this. And then you have it open like that. There you go. And then this piece does pull out. And it has a quarter inch spine, like a little gusset there. And then you have your waterfall. This flips open to here. I use just my scraps, but look how pretty that is. That is just cute just by itself. The colors in this collection, they're so vibrant and pretty. And you could do a lot of different things with it. So definitely check it out. You can only get this collection at countrycraftcreations.com. And then I used, which we will not be doing in the tutorial, but I used um, Graphic 45's policy envelope um, to make this. And then I cut it twice. So I did it in the green and then in the plaid. And then I just trimmed the plaid so I can use it um, kind of as, not as a mat, but as a layering piece. And then I just punched out some circles with my circle punches I didn't use. There is, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a die in the pack that you can use, but I didn't. I just punched out with my circle punches, two different sizes, and put those on there. And then layered it on top of a little, again, 3 by 4 booklet on top of a 4 by 6 And then this flips open. And this actually goes like that. Not that it matters. And then I do have this as a little tuck spot where you could do four by six photos just in there. I just kind of created my own little embellishments using um, scraps from the paper collection. And I just love the color. It just pops everything. So I had to, you know, find ways to use it because I just loved it. And then this one is just the fishing paper. So it is a great um, collection to do different things with again. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I first just have to say, we're gonna see how far I can get, but I'm just telling you guys, oh my gosh, I live in Washington and we're going through a heat wave right now. And in my house, cause we don't, most people in Washington don't have air conditioners, although I think we all need to now because each summer it's getting hotter and hotter. But it is like 85 degrees inside my house, which I usually can, you know, handle that because I will be at the hotels with turning the, or turning the heat up to 80 degrees and everyone thinks I'm crazy. But, oh my gosh, it's going to be again. Yesterday was 100. It'll be 100 today. 
tomorrow is supposed to be 111. Oh, it's so hot. Uh, so we'll see how far I got because I did turn my fan off in here so you guys can hear me. But I don't know how far we're going to get because I'm dying right now. <laughs> and you guys are going to crack up laughing. And I just, I'll just apologize now. But once you get to know me, you know, I share way too much information. But to stay cool, <laughs> I have put ice cubes in my bra. You know, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. I'm just saying, you know, can't take ourselves too serious. <laughs> I don't know why I shared that with you guys, but that's just me. Okay, so we are going to start with the cover. You will have two pieces of chipboard five and a half by seven and a half and I do as you can see I put my tape on the back I do love my score tape um, but I'm I'm kind of both I do score tape and glue but totally up to you I've seen people glue and it's just fine I just don't like any air bubbles in my cover so that's just me I've tried it several different ways a thousand different times and this for me I'm fine with um, and then you will need a piece for the spine that is one by seven and a half. And these are two pieces of eight and a half by 11 that we are going to use. Now you do not have to do this. You can use 12 by 12. I'm saving paper because as you can see, so typically when we do a cover on our chipboard, most of us like an inch around. If I could save paper and, and not have the inch and go cut your 12 by 12 up and waste that. Not that you would waste it because you could use it for scraps and other things, but for me, this is fine. I'm okay with having just a half inch on one side. It's no big deal. It's going to get covered up with um, decorative papers anyways and all the things we're going to add to it. So I'm fine using eight and a half by 11, but you can do 12 by 12. You can cut it down to, if you're going to do the one inch, so obviously if this is seven and a half inches and you want to inch all the way around, you're going to do nine and a half for your cover for the paper. So you would cut your 12 by 12 down to nine and a half and then glue piece the two pieces together like we're about to do. And then you'll be fine. But let me just show you. So this is just what I do. I score mine at one inch and then I rotate it and usually do one inch but this time we're gonna do half inch and the only reason why I'm doing this is so that I have something and I always flip it on the bump I have something to line my chipboard up with you don't have to you can create your own shim you can cut chipboard to one inch lay it here and then just you know line up your chipboard to it when when you want to do that but this works for me I've been doing it forever, so yep, we're just going with it. But everyone has their own style. Everyone changes their style all the time. We're always constantly seeing new ideas and trying different things, but okay, so here we go. So most of the stuff I have already um, score taped or put down, or not put down, scored. So we will just talk through to speed up the process versus showing you all of this, but I do use my little, um, what is this? Little B. Yeah. So this is, you can purchase like tape. It's a washi tape. <laughs> and I literally a Tuesday morning, they used to have this and I would purchase it just for the washi tape. I mean, just for the um, little blades right here. Ginger had did this once and I loved it. And I'm hooked. I can't do my finger. I hate all you guys that can do your finger and rip the tape. I've tried. I try to be all fancy and be like, oh, boop. Nope. It doesn't work. It's all jagged and gross and I can't do that. So for those that can, I hate you. Just saying. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to lift up a little bit of my score tape so that I can get it lined up. For me, I always line it up on my mat. You don't have to, most don't. Most people just smack it down and that is fine too. I just like my bumps to line up 
and then I know it's straight. So I always do a half inch, half inch, get it down so my bump here where I scored is lined up. And then I could just pull that off and I know I'm good. Now, let's say you don't do that and it's not totally straight. It doesn't matter. It's getting folded over the book anyways. I'm just crazy like that. Okay, so we are going to stick these down. So you can see we're only gonna have a half inch. So I'm just showing you what I do. So I just kind of lay these out the order they go. Because when you're doing like the bigger folios, I always mess up, which you guys are going to see me, I know, because I always mess up on every project on something. So there's going to be some mess ups here. But I try to not mess up <laughs> by laying these out first, then sticking them down. And then I know what pieces um, go next. Because when you're doing different sizes, oh my gosh, I've messed it up so many times. Like on the recipe folio album, um, the large one. I always mess it up. So again, I am just putting it down on the bump, matching it up on the other side that I can't really see. Otherwise my head would be in the photo. But you have that down and then we need our, my 1 8 inch score tape is falling apart. So I, again, just do this, it helps me somewhat line up my space but you don't have to do this and some people like a quarter inch in between I do one eighth it just all depends I feel like the books holds better when it's only an eighth inch but that's again just my opinion I've done both so it's not a big deal Either way, and we will burnish that down in just a second. I'm just getting them placed. So again, just kind of line it. it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's just at least gives me a guide. As you can see, that definitely wasn't perfect. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. I'm beating up with sweat. <laughs> so gross. And I don't normally sweat. Um, okay, so we got this last piece, and this just goes like that. So again, I'm just kind of lining it up on both. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And again, you guys know I say that because I need to tell myself in case I, you know, mess up. But, okay, so I just get out now. Again, I'm just giving you guys what I do. But as you probably know, everyone does something different. So I literally, just to get my one inch, I line up my chipboard with one inch. Oh, and then you need the blade in there. That's silly. My blade popped out. Okay. So... But you could just cut it with scissors, which most people do because they're not crazy like me. And it's just fine as well. So you have that. And then we are going to turn this over and burn it. Now, if I had a bigger album, I would be using my, um, oh my God, what is it called? A brayer? I, yeah, I think that's it. But you know, the little rolly thing. Is great for burnishing down big covers but you can just use your spatula whatever you want to use but you do want to make sure that you are you know burnished good so you have a nice seal and I'm just gonna make sure these are good I always just peel these up first just get it out of the way and then I'm just going to do 3 8 inch here. And on this one, I will probably add like a bead of glue. Because I really do, I like just a nice snug fit for my covers. So typically when I do the 1 inch, 
which again, I know it's expensive using square tape, but it's worth it for me on the covers. I do one inch on the sides. I used to do like here and here, but now I just do the one inch. It saves me time, it's easier, and I know it's a good stick all the way around because I can get it all the way up. Glue works just fine too. I don't know, I just feel better. My biggest thing is if I make something for somebody, I get nervous, I don't want it to fall apart. So I will only use score tape or glue. I do not chance with any other type of tapes on my covers, that's just me. I did a test, I don't know, a few years ago where I made you know a few different things using different adhesives and then over time I just watched to see what happened and not all of them stayed. Like I had to keep pressing them to together. So yeah, that's not my thing. Okay, so here we are uneven, it's totally fine. We're gonna cut the corners. I just wanna show for any of those beginners out there that don't feel comfortable with cutting corners there is this tool, this is what I used to use. And you can see I had my Copics on here, but, um, and I still do every once in a while, but, and this is the side that I would normally use, giving me that corner. You just put this on your chipboard like that, and you could either mark it with a pencil or I would just cut it with my blade. And then I knew for sure my corners would be covered. But yeah, we're just going with it. Okay, so we are gonna cut this first. And I just leave like, you know, an eighth of an inch somewhat. And there have been times where I have been off. I'm sure you guys have seen it in some of the videos, but it's easy to fix. And once you get everything else on there anyways, it's no big deal. Well, let's just say that I'm off, which I might be once we're done. You can put this corner down and again, you won't see it. Or you could just get your black marker and just cover it. It's not that big of a deal. So go like that just to kind of get the paper trained a little bit, loosen up those fibers. And then we will stick it down. And I'm gonna just add some glue. Okay, and then I just fold it over. That's my new thing. <laughs> it is way easier because sometimes when I go to fold, it'll bubble up or something. So I just started doing that. It works for me. I know I'm gonna get a nice clean edge like that there. But I, you know, I'm sure as I'm doing this, now that I said that, it's not gonna be a nice edge on one of these. And again, it's okay, because once you're done with everything else, it's not gonna matter. So we're just gonna take these off. Okay, and then I just press that glue in and just fold it right on over. Sorry, this table, ooh, yeah. And there we go. Already boo-boos sticking to the mat. But I just like, I like how clean and easy that, that is. So I'm just gonna kinda make sure you guys could still see me. Tuck in the corners. I am um, still kind of on my little stay home uh, vacation, staycation. My husband is in DC right now being crazy. He is, I'm just gonna clip this corner a little bit. He has been dying to go visit over there and I'm not kidding you guys. When he said that, I booked his trip so fast for him <laughs> because he hasn't left here for like two years and I just want the house to myself for a moment. Does anyone relate? I mean, it has nothing to do with me not loving my husband or my family. I do. But, oh my gosh. So, he's been gone for, let's see, three days. 
and he um, yeah left Thursday and ideally my whole plan was to be crafting the entire time which I really just started just now basically the on the last full day that I have because I got so excited so both my kids my daughter moved out last week my son moved out a few weeks ago and um, I literally like just started cleaning because I knew that if I had everything cleaned it would stay clean because nobody's here <laughs> so I've just been enjoying my nice clean house where I don't know if anyone can relate where you clean the kitchen and someone comes home and just gets breadcrumbs or something all over the counter and walks away. Oh my gosh. So I've been in heaven just enjoying this time. So today, because yesterday, Saturday, I had to watch my one-year-old nephew, which, whew, that was a workout, all day so I couldn't craft. Today is all crafting. I do not care. So I'm hoping to get a lot of tutorials done today. We will see. Because I also might pass out from the heat. But okay, so here is our base of the border. And I always just kind of pinch those in there, adhere them to the glue, give it a little bend. Now, some of the albums I've been doing has been um, with Tamara from Country Craft Creations, new method of how to do the spine. This folio, I had already made the base. So that's why I'm just showing you guys how I actually did it. But I would probably do it her way next time, um, which the book just lays really nice and flat when it's open. But either way is totally fine. So this is what it looks like. Oh, and on her way, you don't get this seam. I don't know if you guys can see that. Nope, not really. But there's a seam here. And again, it's not that big of a deal because most of it's covered. But I do like that you don't have that seam on her method. Okay. So, let me just kind of clear a couple things out of the way. Whew, toasty, toasty, toasty. Okay, and this is just so you guys can see. I always, I keep like a journal book of all of my, you know, um, what do you call it? Tutorial type things, all of my projects. So, if you want to take a snapshot of that, you might not be able to read my handwriting or understand, you can, but... <laughs> That's what I do, um, and that way I can revert back to it if I need to, and it's not in like a whole bunch of different spots. Although, this big book is almost getting filled. Okay, so we are going to start with something. Hold on, I do not have it with me. Where is it? I have the paper somewhere, cut, ready to go. And now I can't find them. Oh, here they are. Oh my gosh, I have another tutorial waiting to go that is right next to me. Okay, so what we are going to do is, oh my goodness, this camera drives me crazy. Okay, so you need one piece that is seven and three eighths by 10 and seven eighths. And we're going to score it at five and a quarter and five and a half. So for now, we're just going to put this aside. So you are going to, on your scoreboard, again, I have everything scored already. So I'm not going to do this for all, but I just want to show you. So you're going to score at five and a quarter and five and a half. And this is going to be our little flip out that you can pull out on the inside pocket. And we are just going to fold this and it's going to have a quarter inch spine, gusset, whatever you want to call it. And then we have one more to fold on. Ooh, I'm really hoping I can make it through these tutorials today. Okay, so... That is what it's gonna look like there. And I have, so if you, there you could see a little bit better. So it's a little off and that's on purpose because this part is going to slide into the book and it measures five and a quarter and the book is five and a half. Wait, this way. <laughs> so this side, I don't know what side. Let me look and see. Now I'm confused. 
I think the smaller side goes in there. Oh, let's see. Because we are going to find out here. No, it is the larger. Five and a quarter. Yes, that is correct. So the larger side goes into the pocket. It's five and a quarter. The book is five and a half. Because when we put everything else on, we're going to leave a little gap. So when we fold it up, it folds nicely. So we will do that. And then I just rounded my corners. Because you don't have to, but I like to because when you're going in and out um, of pockets and stuff, the corners start getting, you know, dog-eared bent so it works better if you round the corners so we have our first little um, flip out there so we're gonna leave this like that set that aside and then oh my goodness it's so hot we are going to create the pocket so for the pocket you're gonna need a piece that is six by eight and a half then we're gonna score it at a half inch on three sides, and that's gonna give us our pocket. So it looks like that. So I already have that done, and then we're going to miter the corners, and I'm just doing it right at the, where all the um, score edges meet, at the cross there, do the top. And I have glue on my scissors. Where did that come from? I do not usually have stuff with glue with those scissors. Okay, so then all we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this up. I'm literally dying. Okay, and then this is going to go on the inside of our cover and I want the seam to be on the back. So this will go on the inside and pull it all the way up to the top like that. And when I cut this, I'm just gonna tell you, so it's six by eight and a half, but I did just go a smidgen under six just to give me when I fold up a little bit of space here from that. So just so you know. and. Want to look to see? Yes, I did. So I did forget one thing here. So on your cover, told you there was going to be some mess ups. We're going to go ahead and just, we got to cover the spine first. So that way, none of the black shows. I totally forgot about that and I literally always just find a piece of scrap paper because I don't I used to cover the whole thing it's a waste of paper to do that it doesn't make a difference on your project so I don't know I don't do it but if you want to you go for it and again I always glue around the edges here because when you go to fold up any of your albums, if you did not really glue this well or put your score tape down, it is going to bubble up and it won't be pretty when you're done with your project. So I always make sure I have that really good. Okay, let me find a scrap piece of paper real quick, which I have plenty. I just need it to be at least seven and a half and wide enough. Okay. Closer. Okay, so. Okay, so this is all we're doing here. And I just cut it slightly under seven and a half. So, just so you guys know, this was literally just a scrap piece of paper, three inches. All that I care about is that it gets over all this right here. Okay, so we're gonna take this all off. 
and then I add glue around the edges of the scrap paper. Of course I forgot to do this. Oh my goodness, what if I'm doing a video and I pass out because it's so hot? <laughs> that would be so crazy. Okay, so we're just going to get a little bit more on there. And I do want to make sure that the edge is good. Okay, so we are just going to put that down. Doesn't have to be perfect. And just make sure that it is burnished really good. And then we're gonna get it in those grooves. And you wanna be careful with this one because you do not wanna score so hard that it doesn't, you know, or that it goes all the way through because I have done that. And I'm sure several of you have done that as well. I can't possibly be alone on that one. So I just gently get it up, but I make sure the paper is all the way in there on that score tape that's in there. Now, if you didn't do score tape in the middle, you would glue inside and do that too. So either way, you just wanna make sure it sticks good. So I can see right there, some of the glue's loose. Just gotta get it burnished down really good. Okay, so we are good. And we are going to go ahead and start. Let me put my pen back in my glue. And I am definitely, there's definitely going to be a part two because I'm going to need a break just to go cool off. <laughs> or go get some more ice cubes. <laughs> They're not working. Okay, so I am lining up these two edges first. And hopefully I'm good because I can't see above the camera. So I'm just sticking down this little corner. And I do think it's good. So we are just going to pull that. And it is on there good. Now, before I go anywhere, and I mess this up all the time too. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot. Because I messed up on the original, which you guys can't tell, can you? Because I was able to fix it. Okay. I just take some tape. When it's not like a tutorial, I use packing tape. I don't know why I like packing tape. But I just go over where this edge is because... It, um, when you put something like we're going to be tucking this into the pocket, it does get stuck in there. Now I will tell you, so on the last one, I didn't do that and it kept getting stuck, but after a while of pulling it in and out, loosening up the fibers of all the pages, it works just fine. It's just in the beginning, it does that. So to alleviate that, I always just put down tape and you don't, I kind of press this down a little too hard, but you don't want that little ridge. You just lightly press it down. Now, on the original, what I messed up on is you have to put this little guy in. You have to punch the hole and put this little guy in at least, you know, because it has to go through here. You don't see it through this. So, I, let me see how I did that. I punched it through. I had a, literally, you guys. So I had this in there. So imagine, you know, this is the book. I had this in there. I punched all the way through this entire thing, or not with this down. I had it open like this and I punched through with my giant, I don't know what it's called, but the big crocodile. Let me show you. If you guys don't have this, you really need it. It is. It gets into really big projects. I love this thing. So I literally wasn't thinking and I was like, oh, let me do my, you know, hole to put my thing in. I punched it through this thing. But luckily I did it before all the paper was added. So I was able to cover everything up with paper. But you would want to do that right now. I'm not going to do it on this one um, because I don't know with this folio if I'm going to use the doorknob again. But you could do it here or you can use your regular 
crop a dial too. It doesn't even have to be this one. Um, but you would do it like that. You could put this through and then just tape it down so it stays and then do your pocket. And again, I like to show you guys my mistakes. So on this one, because I did that and had, I had to literally, the pocket was already down. I had to put this screw in. I just took a scrap piece of black paper. Well, you can't really see it. But I took a scrap piece of black paper, put glue on it, and then just glued it, glued over the top of the screw. And now you never know it was there. But we are just gonna, for the purpose of speeding up this tutorial, because I'm about to die, um, <laughs> we're gonna put the pocket down like this. So if I didn't explain that well, please let me know in the description if you have any other questions or in the comments, I mean, and I could try to answer there too. But here is your pocket. Now you could, if you really wanted to, just go ahead and punch through all this. It's going to be covered with paper. You could put the screw in and cover that up too. Totally up to you. How you want to, whatever you do, don't close your pocket because that's how I did this at first. I was about to close up my pocket with the screw. Okay, so now we have our first pocket. We have our little flap. I'm gonna see if I can do just a few more minutes before we pause video. So see how nice that slides in there now that the tape is in there, voila. Okay, so now we are going to do our pockets, which, okay, let me just lay these out. to show you okay so we need one piece that is five by five eighths by seven and a half and then we're going to score at half inch and then five eighths of an inch okay so you have that that's one piece then you need another piece that is five and a half by seven and a half score at a half inch on the five and a half inch side. And then one more large piece. These are gonna be our flaps that flip out. Five by seven and a half, score at a half inch on the five side. Okay, so I've already scored those. I'm going to just fold these all over. I have my score tape on this one here. And let's just miter the corners real quick. And it's easier for me to go from the top out. That way I know I'm not gonna cut my corner, so that's why you see me flipping my paper all over the place. I don't want a chance cutting this part versus the flap that you won't see. So I always go from the top out, flip it, top out. Okay, so we have this one done. weird for some reason. Okay. Okay, we're good. And that one, and then this one. And again, you can use glue. Doesn't have to be score tape. And just on these, when you have a 1 8 inch gusset, you know, it's a little harder to fold. Just, you know, gently put it into place and then crease the score line. And this is just giving us a little bit room with all these flaps. And once you insert, you know, the pockets, you'll be fine. So this piece is going to go like this. I wrote on it backwards, so. And I just wanna show everyone. Oh my God, it's so hot. Okay, so all the pieces are going on top of this pocket, nowhere else. So just on top of the pocket. So this one will go down just like that. And I'm just checking, again, my cuts. They're all, let's see, seven and a half. And sometimes, like this one's a little hair 
longer, so I just want to make sure because I'll fix that. It just depends on all of my cutting tools. They're all like slightly different. Because what you don't want is it to hang over at all. So I am just going to trim this just real quick, like just a hair off of this. Better to have it uh, too short than too long in this case. Okay. I just feel like those were just a hair off. Now, that's just me being crazy and I'm just doing a tutorial so I shouldn't have even cared. <laughs> but I can't help it. Okay, so we're just going to put a little piece out. Fold it on that half inch. Line it up with the edge of the pocket that we just did. I can see I didn't do that very well up there. Okay, edge of pocket. I'm sorry, I kind of have to work at an angle here because of the way the camera is. Okay. And put that down. Burnish it really good there. Then, all we're going to do is take these two and get those down here like that. So I'll just, again, just kind of show you as we're going what it's looking like so we have this is a piece we just laid down and then these are going to be the two pieces right there so I do these two just off the book like so yeah, this is really messy already goodness gracious so we have it lined up there on the side. I'm going to have to move this over because I literally cannot see. Okay. And wrap that down. And then if I wanted to do any trimming now, I could, but it looks pretty good like off like a little smidgen I mean literally just a hair there I feel better now it's even <laughs> so we have that and then we're gonna put this now onto the pocket at the top so again let's just peel back a little bit here and we are going to put this down like so. Okay, so we got that. There you go. And voila. Now, next piece we need is a four and a quarter by three, four and three quarters. We're gonna score at half inch on the four and three quarter side. So we're going to miter these corners. Flip, do it again. Fold it over. Let me just give it a good crease. There we go. And then I'm going to now stick this on here. So you can measure where your center is. I am just eyeballing this one. It'll be fine either way. Like that. So I just put this on top of this one. You can put it over if you don't want to see that seam. I've done it several different ways. I don't know, I just go with it, whatever the case is. But you can put it over the back and then fold it over. Totally up to you. 
So now we have this in place. And then just what you'll need once you start decorating. So my photo mat that was on the inside here is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then my two four by six photo mats is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And that's what I use on the inside of, where is it? So this one gets one. And then when we have this one in the pocket, get it in the pocket like that. This one is right there. So literally it's just like that there. Okay, so we have that done. Um, and we are going to have to take an intermission. <laughs> and I will be back with the rest of the book and what that's going to look like. So go ahead and get started on this and then be on the lookout for part two. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure that you do so that way you can see future projects um, and future tutorials. And if you did like this, please be sure to help support my channel and give me a big old thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye.